Welcome to another edition of the Davidson Coach's Corner with Scott Abel, powered by Wade Associates. Coach, you righted the ship a little bit this weekend, went down to Jacksonville, took care of business, 5-2 and two overall, 2-1 two and one in the league. Always better to come home on the bus with a win. All right, let's get right into it. Wesley Duggar, monster game, 193 yards, five touchdowns. He passed John Leverett and Ray Sinclair all time with 37 touchdown scores. What was working well for Wesley and the offense all, all, all game long? Yeah, you know, we, we talked about coming out of the San Diego game that, uh, you know, we really allowed San Diego to, to dictate um, our, our offense, you know, and that fell on me, you know. And so I, I had told Wesley and Story and company all week that we were going to get them going uh, one way or another, and that was up to me. And, and, and so um, and then it was up to them to do the hard work. You know, I had the easy job calling the, calling the offense. And, and there's numerous ways for us to get our, our downhill game going, and, and we are committed to do that a lot of ways this week. And, uh, man, what a fantastic game he had and uh, just what, what great effort. You know, when you watch Wesley run, there's things that jump out of you, right? It, you know, he, he's, he's got better than average speed that, that people probably don't give him enough credit for. He's got unbelievable balance and vision, and, and he runs incredibly hard. And so that is up to us to really get him going each and every week. And last week, that's on me. I didn't give him that opportunity. And this week we did, and he took full advantage of it. As dominant as you were on the offensive end, Defensively, you held the PFL's second-ranked rushing offense behind yourself to 81 yards total on the ground. Who stood out to you? Oh, man, who, who didn't stand out, right? What a, what a collectively great team effort, you know. And, and you're seeing that a part of our defense, you know, that, you know, uh, we, we fly the football. We don't have one guy that, that has these unbelievable gaudy stats. Instead, we have a lot of guys who have really good stats. Everybody's chipping in, and, and uh, you see 11 guys, 11 hats getting to the ball every play, and, that's really what, what we envisioned when we arrived here 18 months ago. And to see that side of the football grow the way they've grown this year it is incredibly rewarding for us. I'm really proud of our defensive staff and more proud of our kids and, and how they've grown and what they've turned themselves into. Your team faced a lot of adversity this weekend. You came off a loss. You're on the road. Potentially, the game gets moved a couple hours back. Your kicker goes down in pregame. Your center comes out in one of the first series. How impressed were you with your team's resilience and who kind of filled in for those, those spots that you, that you needed? Yeah, well, you're right about that. There's a lot, there's a lot going on there. And, and, you know, I think the, the, the good thing for us is coming off that loss in San Diego, that's, it's really what we focused on. We, we, we had to be better prepared for those moments, those adversity moments. We had to be better prepared to fight for full quarters. And so we talked about that all week. And here we are on Friday. We're preparing for a storm, change the game plan a little bit. We were preparing to maybe have to stay an extra night to maybe even move in the game to Sunday. So... You know, we had talked about that mental toughness a lot. And then Kane going down in pregame certainly threw us for a loop. And, uh, and Tate going down, it was the third play of the game. And, and, um, but we talk about the next man up all the time in our program. And, you know, Pat Tabor came up and said he, he could get the job done at kicking. I, we really had very few options. So, yeah, he kind of won it by default. And what an amazing job he did, right? And so proud of, uh, of him and just really – his being able to stay cool and collective, and man, that's a tough job, right? If you haven't tried to kick a football before, you should try it. And then, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, Brantley coming in at center, right? You know, um, w what a fantastic job he did. We rushed for 520-plus for yards, right? And that all starts with him. We say our centers start the car for us. And uh, he did an amazing job. So proud of him and so proud of those guys who, who really step up and, and, and ring that bell when they get that opportunity. Circling back to Wesley for a moment, on the bus ride home, I noticed it was a kind of a cool Twitter interaction between him yeah. and former Wildcat running back Eric Ferguson, who Wesley passed for third all time. Um, how cool is it for these cats to have a connection with these guys and, you know, getting reacquainted with some of these former cats? Well, that, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. And it's what you want, you know, when, when, when you're the, the, the head coach of a football program, you hope that you can bring all heirs together. And, and to do that, though, you need your players. Right. You know, guys like Wesley bring all airs together. Right. And, and uh, I, I saw the interaction also. I thought it was awesome. And, and that's what you want. You want to be able to connect the past and the present and the future all together. And, uh, you know, it's even better when, when you can see your players and your alumni reaching out to each other doing that. So that's an exciting time. It's exciting for our program. Looking ahead, Maris is coming in here this weekend. They're down a little one and five, but they've had a really tough schedule. Yeah, what can yeah, we expect yeah. to see from this the Red Fox team? Well, listen, there's they're a good one and five teams you'll see. You know, if you look at, you know, their losses are, are to, to Dartmouth, Cornell, Georgetown, San Diego, and Drake. Okay, 
uh, with their one win against Stetson, who beat Dayton this week. So we know that they're a very quality opponent. Um, and, and their opponent last year that, that you know, we, we took to double overtime but couldn't get the win. And uh, our guys will be hungry, and we'll need to be. You know, we'll, we'll need all the fight that we can, can muster up, just like we did last Saturday. Um, and we need to be prepared to be at our best. You alluded to it, the double overtime loss last year. Are you guys thinking about that, or have you wiped the slate clean, 2019, new, new opponent? Oh, no. It, it's, it's something that, that, that's in our mind, you know, that unfinished business that we, we weren't able to finish last year. And that's a credit to Mayors, right? They, they outlasted us in that game. And, uh, you know, every time we have these opportunities, it's time to measure and have we grown from that. And, and that's what we're looking for. Um, but as always, we got to focus on right now, right? And that's, that's preparing this week and having a great week of preparation to get ready for Mayors. It's welcome weekend, which is a combination of homecoming and family weekend. We can expect to see a lot of fans in the stands, right? Oh, yeah. I, I think we'll have a great crowd here. You know, um, our alum and, and our community and our fan base are incredible. They, they continue to be uh, energized by what we're doing here and, and the change in momentum here. And uh, I expect to see a, a sold-out crowd here. And, and uh, we need it. We need all our fan support to come out and uh, be a part of this. Well, the 5-2 and two Cats are back home this weekend, Richardson Stadium against the Marist Red Foxes at 1 p.m. This, that'll do it for this week on the Davidson Football Coaches Corner, powered by Wade Associates. As always, you can follow us on DavidsonWildcats.com and on Twitter at DavidsonFB. For Coach Abel, I'm Jake Brewer. We'll see you next Monday.